back to Waffle TV, sponsored by West Beer. Today we're here with comedian Marlon Davis. Hello. How are you doing? I'm fine, you know, I'm good. Um, up at the end of a fringe, it's halfway through now, and it's going good so far. Cool. So the performance is going really well? Yes, I'm in uh, the Pleasance Courtyard at 7.15, doing a show called Cracking Up, and it's been going good. It's lovely. Every night till the 25th? <laughs> That's right, Sunday the 25th, come down, come see it, let's plug cool. it. Um, but no, it's been good. I'm enjoying the experience of coming up here. Um, I love Edinburgh, so it's just, I've been up here for a couple of times before, so it's the fourth time. So I've done package shows before in the past, I did an hour last year, which was the first one. So this one, it's a brand new thing that I'm doing, so it's just a story. It's a story for the whole show, it's just one story, so it's an arc. And the story is just about uh, my addiction, um, my addiction and how I nearly lost something, I lost my whole family. Uh, my house, everything, just over this uh, game called Football Manager. So that's basically what it is. But it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, how did you get into comedy? You won the FHM yeah. Search for a Stand Up competition. Yeah. I uh, won that back in, I oh, this knows when now, I can't even remember. But um, after that, I mean, a lot of stuff that came off the back of that as well. Um, you've got more shows, you've got more bookings, and from that, you just started to do more stuff and writing, TV appearances, radio appearances as well. So it brings me to where I am right now. So um, I guess it probably was the launch pad to it. So yeah, it's all good. So do you done a lot of comedy stuff before that, or was that sort of your first step into it? It wasn't, no. Before that, uh, I got into, I was doing stand-up for a couple of years. Um, so I, like I said, I come up here in 2006. That's my first time. And um, I've just been going around the circuit and going, doing different bits and pieces, just building up your uh, profile. Um, but that was the first TV uh, thing that I had, which was on ITV4, which is all right, still people still watch it. And um, it was huge, and it was huge for me. And what it meant for me as well, but in that competition, it was just like, oh, you know what, you actually are good at this and you should probably take this more seriously. So what I'd done at that point was I left my job. I left my job. What was your job? I was doing sales. I was an account manager for childcare vouchers. I plugged them too. Um, but I was doing that and I was doing that for years. And I got promoted within the job as well. So I could have took that role and have been that person as well in that life. But really, it wasn't really me. So um, What made you want to choose comedy over that? Because it's sort of, in a way, more of a sort of, um, what's the word, sort of financially secure way to go, more of a safe way to go. Yeah, because it was like I was earning more money than I've ever seen before in my life doing that job. But doing that with comedy as well, what started to happen was I was starting to earn more money doing stand-up. So, I mean... So you made the right choice. It makes sense. It makes sense at that point. So I took the jump and I haven't looked back since. So it's been, it's been good. Um, but getting into stand-up it was something that I always wanted to do anyway. It was something that uh, had like a secret ambition at the back of your head. I don't know what yours was. Are you actually doing yours right now? This is uh, well, acting's probably my main primary thing, yeah. but yeah. But was that at the forefront of your brain yeah. always? Yeah. Okay, well, with me, it was, this comedy was always at the back of yeah. my, my head because I wasn't really, a, I don't really see myself as an outgoing person anyway. I'm more quiet and reserved um, uh, normally, but like, we're around with some friends and what have you, then you come out, you come out more about yourself as well, come out of your shell, uh, and then they see that and they said, you know what, you should probably probably should do some stand-up and I was like okay yes and it went to the back of my head and it was years after years of not actually going up there and doing it and then something happened to me um, when I was what 23 um, there was a guy that I grew up with and he was murdered uh, he was got shot it was in my council estate and what that said to me at that point was, was like you know what Life isn't really promised. If you want to go out and do something, you need to go and do it. You can't really think it's going to happen mm -hmm. next year or the year afterwards. So I went out there that weekend and down to London, which was great because we've got this London circuit and um, there's loads of open mic stuff down there. So I signed up, went on stage and never looked back. So that's what happened. So a lot of your uh, material sort of explores social issues within urban Britain. Do you feel like the way that you grew up and the things you've experienced have really shaped you as a comedian and affected yeah. the way you perform and everything. As a person anyway, but you can only talk about what you know yeah. and make jokes about that. So uh, definitely, definitely it was like m most of my earlier stuff, I would say, was, was more, more to do with that. Um, but then well, I've lived now, so to say, like I've had a job at that point, at that point in time when I first started, um, I didn't have a job, I didn't really, uh, yeah, so it was like, I've gone on a journey so like I like to say that my comedy now represents that so yeah
Brilliant. So what have you got planned after the Fringe for the next sort of year? Um, after the Fringe, like at this moment in time, because it's so hectic, everyone's like, yeah, I just want to take some time off. But it's not going to be like that at all. Um, probably going to come back up here next year with a new show. But um, what I aim to do after the to- after this is that we've got this show. And it's a lovely show. I love the show. Come down. Cracking up. 7.15. Um, <laughs> um, I don't want it to die. So it's not going to die. So what we're going to do, we're going to pull it on a little mini tour. So um, those dates will be on my website, which is marlondavis.co.uk. So you'll see some dates that will pull it on there. Um, probably be like Birmingham, Cardiff and places like that. Um, so that's that's what I'm going to be doing in the next yeah. year. And then there's more opportunities as well for TV, acting. That's what I want to explore as well. Um, we'll have a lot more stuff that I'm going to put on YouTube like this quick short little sketches and clips so that's what I'm going to be doing in the next year great thank you so much for coming and speaking to us Marlon Shaw will be on at the Pleasance Courtyard at 7.15 every night until the 25th thanks for watching